All right, so I get this question very often. What are the first skills that I need to get into robotics? First of all, if you're gonna ask that question, I appreciate you asking that question. Secondly, definitely put a little bit more context to the question. Let me know what type of thing you're looking to do throughout your career. Because this is the first bit of advice that I have for everybody that says, how do I get into robotics? How do I get into automation? How do I get a manufacturing job, right? First, we have to identify what is it exactly you wanna do? Maybe you don't know what you want to do yet, so maybe you need to watch more of the Elite Automation YouTube channel videos, and you'll know what you want to do. Kind of kidding there, but in all reality, you have to consume enough content, you have to have enough understanding of the industry to kind of have a rough idea of what is out there and what's on the market. And when I say that, what do I mean? I mean there's electrical engineering, there's mechanical engineering, there's robot programming, PLC programming, right? And you can't just say, I want to do all that, because if you say, I'll do all that, you won't learn any of it, or you won't learn enough of it, to be able to do any of it, right? And let's say for instance, a mechatronics degree or a robotics degree will teach you a lot of all those things and you will get a, a little bit of a taste of all those different disciplines. Now, the thing that I will suggest is you need to identify what those things, what the exact thing is you really wanna do. Do you wanna do electrical engineering? Do you wanna do mechanical engineering? Do you wanna do robot programming? Do you wanna do PLC programming, HMI development? Now, the next thing to keep in mind is some of these different jobs will take you to different places in your career. One thing I'll say is electrical engineering. I wouldn't necessarily advise going for electrical engineering because it's becoming less and less of a sought after skill set. And when it comes to automation robotics, electrical engineering is not actually a skill set that's utilized very often in our industry. And that might be something that's mind blowing. You'd say, how, how is that possible? But the reason for that is, is because technology is starting to increase in its abilities and the offerings that are on the market. So a lot of things are an ethernet based communication protocol or IO link or some other protocol, right? However, there's some electrical engineering there and there's some electrical wiring there, but you're talking about 24 volts and zero volts, right? You're talking about supply power versus like in, back, you know, 10, 20 years ago, a lot more systems were wired with discrete wiring with, with hardwired IO meaning you had a 20 wire cable and you had to wire that 20 wire cable to all different types of various sensors and devices out on in the field. Now, and also the communication between the robot, you had to communicate from the PLC to the robot through a wired connection that was any signal that you wanted to send the robot, hey, this is done, that's done, this next thing's happening. You had to do all, each one of those signals through an individual wire. Now we're able to do all that stuff. We're able to send the, the robot data, full packets of data, all through Ethernet, right? Or some other similar communication protocol. So with that being said, the electrical engineering is somewhat of a dying skill set in our industry. A lot of times we use the exact same prints from system to system, or maybe we have to add one robot to this electrical engineering print versus this other system that we did had two robots. So a lot of the things are, are very duplicatable because it's just a, a matter of the number of robots that we're adding. Or, and, and then the fact that as a company like ours, we also design things in a very systematic way. So the robot on this robotic system and the robot on this other robotic system that we're building will have the same IP address, right? So all that setup is the same all the things that we do are the same. As much as we can, we keep similarities between the things. The tag names in this PLC are gonna be the tag names in that PLC, at least for the things that we can. When I say like, maybe it's like the cycle start button between the, between the HMI and the robot, right? That tag name will be the same across every one of our systems. And we do that for uniformity. So when it comes to our electrical engineering, that same uniformity is also there meaning there's not a lot of changes between the different drawings. And also like as we grow as a company or as we hire people uh, within our company, they'll learn over time that label number 465 is gonna be a, let's say 24 volt wire. And, and they just learn that over time because almost every time our fourth page of our electrical drawings is the 24 volt page, right? And so I would just be careful of getting into electrical engineering because there's a lot less of that. And also if you wanna get into automation, there's much less electrical engineering involved in automation as well. Now, going into mechanical engineering, there's things that always need to be designed. There's things that are always custom to automation. So in automation, we'll always need mechanical engineers. And I think that like AI and stuff like that will 
really struggle to catch up and have the capability to be able to mechanically engineer things in the way that we need it to engineer. Uh, I think honestly programming a PLC and robot is more likely to get tackled by AI before any other platform. Just because it's a programming language, they're already working on language, language models, so it's a matter of like teaching and having an AI system that can learn those models to be able to kind of take over the programming platform and be able to do just a text to program type of uh, operation. Now I still think this is, this is some time out, it's probably years out, and also it's gonna take a programming style individual to talk to that chat, to then create the program, to then also have to verify that program. So you'll never be able to upload a program into a system for any time near in the future and be able to say this program has been verified and validated without actually verifying and va validating it by human eye and human hand. That'll be there for some time. Now, I, I personally come from a po programming background. I was a controls engineer for the majority part of my career, at least, at least the engineering portion of my career. So if I had to give somebody kind of a direction on which way to go, I would advise people to start off with robotics and do robot programming because robot programming is a little bit more simple. It's, it's programmed in a linear fashion. So it's easier to understand than PLC programming where PLC programming is like doing a bunch of this, right? That's the easiest way for me to explain it. The way that a PLC scans, it's a multitask operating system where, which means it can do something over here and over here at the exact same time. Whereas a robot can only do the thing in front of it. So the code, the line of code that you're reading is the line of code that's executing, right? There's also background uh, programs inside of robots and stuff now, and and you, you know you might have to take those into consideration, and you might be running some code in a background logic, but for the most part, robot code is very linear. So let's take a step back on choosing exactly what it is you want to do, and I'll explain to you a little bit more of what would be good for you to know as a total overview. So. One thing that is very important is having a very good understanding of systems. And when I say systems, I mean a system as a whole. Being able to think about a system as a whole. Being able to think about, you know, this is more than just a robot. Just knowing that this HMI is talking to that PLC that's talking to that robot. This robot is picking up this part, placing it on this thing, and then doing this other thing with it. Or, or picking it up here, doing something with it, and then placing it there, right? And I'm speaking in very general terms, right? But you have to be able to understand these very simplistic things on how systems work and to be able to move on to the next phases of, of your career. And, and it's just going to be the overall the highest leverage thing that you can learn and be able to apply all different types of skills or learn all different types of things. Because after you start to understand the systems and, and, and kind of like the process flow of how things are manufactured and how things go through different processes, you'll start to learn more detailed things like degrees of freedom, like nesting, like, and, and I'll just go into a couple examples of that. Degrees of freedom, what is degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom means in which way can something move about? If you're trying to pick up something, one of the big things that you have to do whenever you're, you're picking something up is you have to control the degrees of freedom. Right, if I grab something uh, like this and I only grab it right there, it's plausible it can hinge right here and maybe this will cause problems, right? Maybe hopefully you can see that, right? That there's a hinge right there. And so this degree of freedom is not being controlled at all, right? So in order to control that degree of freedom, we have to grab right here. So now you're controlling by this degree and this degree. So degree of freedom is one thing that you'll learn as you start to understand more about systems, you'll start to think more along the lines of like, okay, how do I control this part? What are different ways that I can pick this up? Should I use a gripper? Should I use a vacuum tool? And, and so there's so much when it comes to automation that we really have to dive into a particular exact topic to really say like, what is the thing you should learn, right? Because if I said like, what's the first thing to get started in robotics or automation, that means the whole thing, right? That what's the first, like, so it helps to know, like, if, if it's a mechanical engineer, now we have to talk about things like degrees of freedom, right? Very important for somebody who's a degree, uh, who's doing degrees of freedom. Or maybe the nesting, right? Which nesting means that we're equally placing uh, components 
at an equal distance from one another so that way the robot can pick 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 and if they're all one inch apart from one another the robot program can also just be one inch apart from one another and be able to perform that pick operation. So if somebody has to mechanically design that nest for all the things to be equally separated from one another, then there's a you know small calculation to how many things can we fit on a nest versus what's the robot's reach. So there has to be analysis on the robot reach. And so I'm just giving like a bunch of brief examples of some, some things you'd have to learn in these different skill sets. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the robot programming thing and show you kind of how some of these things align. Going back to the nest part of it, and the mechanical engineer has to design that nest with the components, let's say one inch apart or 25 millimeters apart if you're if you're working in metric. Uh, let's say for instance, they're, they're 25 millimeters apart and in the robot program, you have to adjust that. And, and a good thing we're talking millimeters because all robots are in millimeters. So the uh, robot program needs to auto adjust. You don't teach, if there's 50 pieces of uh, pieces on this uh, nest, you don't teach 50 pickup positions. That's not the proper way to do the programming. The proper way to do the programming is that you teach one position and then you add 25 to each one. Then after you go, let's say they're 10 wide, you add a 10 to the other direction, it, or when I say you add a 10, you add up to 10, then you need to uh, multiply by 25, let's say they're an inch up as well, multiply by 25 millimeters, or you need to add 25 millimeters, but it's a multiple if you're, if you're multiplying by the number of rows. See, like this is, the, this is the mindset, we'll leave this in the video, right? This is the mindset of how you have to think as a programmer to you know, be able to accommodate picking from a nest and, and programming in a way that's the proper way of programming. Sure, you could program all 50 points, uh, but then you'll have issues with like some points being off. And there's some instances where you know, doing this offset type of positioning is not always the best thing. Uh, like say for like welding, you can't really like offset positions as much. You, you can do it and like at least get some like rough programming in place if you're a fast programmer. But a lot of times like you have to end up touching up things in the long run anyway. So some instances this doesn't work out. This is also something you learn after, uh, after some experience. Uh, going back to my, my multiplier thing, right? So, you know, uh, after you did your 10 rows, you need to multiply how many ever number of rows that you are by 25. So you're, you've completed one row, so one row plus, times 25, then, then now you've moved up to the next row. Okay, so first row here, second row here. Boom, now you're gonna do all those 10. Then you're gonna add another one, so now you're gonna be on the second row, so times two, 25 times two, to give you 50 millimeters. So now you're 50 millimeters, AKA two rows up from your start position. And so then you'll go over and you'll pick your 10 parts again, times three, by 25, you'll do that same process over and over again, right? And, and so these type of programming techniques you'll need to have in place in order to say gain more experience or if you wanna learn more knowledge in robotics, these are the things that we have to dive into, right? I have to be able to tell you the specific thing in, in robotics or PLC uh, to be able to help guide you. And, and one of my thoughts is I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make some videos that are, that are robot specific that are PLC specific, maybe HMI specific, and uh, you know, make these videos where they're a little bit tailored towards that, but also like with the you know, amount of experience and everything, I can make probably 10 videos on just robot programming, or just PLC programming, and barely even scratch the surface of the things there are to learn. But maybe I could touch base on like a, a few things that will kind of help you in the very beginning of your career, but definitely programming side of things, understanding different, I'll say programming matrix or programming fundamentals that will then be applicable to many things you'll do in programming. Uh, that's definitely one thing. Just learning basic things about mechanical engineering, stresses, weights, or payloads, reach, things like that. Those will be important on the mechanical engineering side of things. Again, hopefully this video was valuable to you guys. Give it a thumbs up if it is. And let's dive deeper into this topic. Like ask some more deeper questions. Give me, give me a paragraph or, or something uh, to let me know exactly what you guys would like to learn specifically. And then we can make a video on that topic. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep making videos. I'm gonna try to get to like some PLC robot, mechanical engineering specific things. And I'll talk on these topics as much as I can. Again, I'm not a mechanical engineer, even though I work with mechanical engineers on, on a daily basis. Some of these things I can only give a brief overview and, and understanding from my perspective of these particular engineering facets. So catch you on the next one. Hopefully this was valuable and go check out the manufacturing come up where we teach you how to navigate your career. Let's go.